Okay, it is time for my top 50 players in the NHL for our 2023 edition. I would just like to say before we get started, some disclaimers here. Um, there are no goalies on this list. There will be a separate list posted likely on Wednesday or Thursday that will discuss the top 20 goalies that I have. And that I was thinking about doing coaches and prospects and GMs, but we might be a little ways away from that just yet. However, this is my top 50 skaters for this um, 2023 season. And I would like to base this off of the last two seasons, including 2021-22 and 2022-23. Those are the two seasons we're basing this off of. And I would also like to say I did miss some people that I would like to give shout-outs to right now. And there's also some notable snubs here that I think people uh, should know are not on this list. The first one that you guys should know is Brock Nelson. Nelson is not going to be on this list. Uh, he was mentioned. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins did not make this list either. He is not a he's not a top 50 player in my eyes. In my eyes, he is a power play merchant. Uh, and then he got Artemi Panarin. And Panarin, I greatly apologize to Rangers fans. I missed out on him. I'd probably put him in the 30s or the mid-20s, but I missed out on Panarin. And that is my fault. I do greatly apologize for that. But I made this list almost a week ago, and I have to ride with it. This is the list that I'm going with for this video. So... Apologies to Rangers fans. You guys do have some other players on here that did deserve where they are. Uh, Zach Wierenski didn't make it either. Wierenski was hurt the majority of the year. People mentioned him. He's not in this list. Mark Stone, did, I didn't put him in either because he's had injury issues, and it would be unfair to put uh, to put him above other players who played full seasons, even though Mark Stone is an incredible player and could be on this list next year. Uh, and then I also left out Nico Heischer as well uh, for the New Jersey Devils. So... Yeah, regardless, let's get into number 50. So number 50, I have Jonathan Huberdeau of the Calgary Flames. And again, Huberdeau barely cracks into the top 50. And if I had someone like Panarin on this list, then I would absolutely not have Huberdeau in here. So apologies, again, Rangers fans. But Huberdeau, look, he had a 115-point season last year. Uh, and then this year he had the biggest drop-off. And that's honestly the reason why he's on this list for that 115-point year. Unless if he puts up another 115-point season, I can almost guarantee he won't be on this list next year. So, Huberto at 50. 49 is Kevin Fiala of the Los Angeles Kings. I think is a very solid forward for the Kings. Was acquired, of course, last offseason. Had a great season with the Wild. Had a 72-point year with the Kings. He could reach that 80-85 point mark, but I'm not so sure about that. Number 48 is Andre Sveshnikov for the Carolina Hurricanes. I like Sveshnikov a lot. Um, obviously can score Michigan's very well. Uh, took on this past season as an elite passer, an elite scorer as well. Uh, great player for the Hurricanes, criminally underrated. Number 47, I have Claude Giroux of the Ottawa Senators. Uh, of course, he had another amazing career year, in fact, uh, with Ottawa. And then as well as that, too, in that previous year with Philadelphia, uh, he had himself a very good season also. Number 46 is his teammate, Brady Kachuk of the Ottawa Senators. I thought Kachuk also had a pretty good year, and he's not a... He's not like a sniper type player. He's a grinder. He can fight. He's physical. Yet he still put up 30 goals, which I thought was very impressive for a guy like him. So props to Brady Kachuk at 46. 45 is Anze Kopitar of the Los Angeles Kings. I thought Kopitar has had very solid previous years. He was also signed to a contract a few days ago. So Kopitar deservingly uh, gets into the 45, 45 spot there. And you can kind of tell for these first five. I'm going a little bit faster than usual because we do have to go through 50 freaking players. So I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go hugely in depth with everyone. Just kind of give a quick recap on why I put them here. Um, Devon Taze of the Colorado Avalanche I have up next. Uh, Taze is the huge part, and we'll get into this a little bit later, of why Kael McCarr is the elite defenseman that he is. Uh, Taze covers the back end of that Avalanche pairing and that blue line overall. Criminally underrated, a great defenseman. Um, Patrick Kane as a free agent, the only free agent that's on this list, uh, he made it into my 43 spot and I like Kane a lot. Um, look, he's not as good as he used to be still a really solid offensive player. There were some people even arguing that he shouldn't be on the list, which is a valid argument, but I put him on here just so, uh, then you got Shea Theodore of the Vegas Golden Knights, who was a key part in their Stanley Cup run this past year. Um, I think they had, I think he's a great defenseman, had cancer, a uh, very underrated guy, and nobody really talks about him. So he definitely deserves to be in the top 50. At 41, I have Alex Ovechkin. And people really disagreed with this a lot on the TikTok and the Instagram end of things. 
Look, I got to be honest with you. Ovechkin is no more than a top forty play, top 50 player in the NHL at this point in his career. If we're looking like even like three years ago, he probably is in the 20s or even the top 10. But he's not in, He's not there now. His defensive capabilities are just not good. He stays in the same spot. I mean, like that's been a commonly used thing with Ovechkin. I know it's not fully true, but it is somewhat true. So that's why I factor it in. He's really only good anymore because he scores goals, if I'm being brutally honest. He's an all right passer now, but the only reason why he's this good at the state of his career is because he scores goals. That's it. And yes, he may pass Gretzky, and he will be the greatest goal scorer of all time. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But he's no more than a top 40 player right now. I'm sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. Uh, at number 40, rounding out the rounding out the first 10, I have Jesper Bratt. Uh, Brad, a very solid young forward for the New Jersey Devils, had two breakout years and will definitely be a great player uh, in the coming years with the Devils and could be even higher on this list. Number 39, I have Matt Barzell. Uh, Barzell, even though he may not put up the points, he still has the skill. Uh, he's an unbelievably skilled player. He was hurt for some of this year, uh, but still a really good player uh, and also kind of carried the Islanders for a little bit there with, with Sorokin, of course. Uh, then he got... Um, Dylan Larkin of the Detroit Red Wings at 38th. Uh, Larkin, I think, is a solid player. Took a big step this past year with the Red Wings, and I think he'll take another one this coming year with adding Dabrinkit to that lineup, and I think they'll be a much better team next year. Detroit will be. Might need to make another video on Detroit, but we might, we'll might we probably wait. But anyways, uh, then he got Patrice Bergeron at 37. He's probably played his last season in the NHL. Still a criminally underrated forward uh, for the Boston Bruins. Great two-way player. Won the Selkie God knows how many times. Um, and if this is his last year, it sucks, but an amazing player overall. Uh, Alexander Barkov of the Florida Panthers is actually beating him at the 36 mark. Barkov, another underrated center, great at the two-way, and just a great forward overall there for the Florida Panthers. I have Jack Eichel at 35, and a lot of people on my TikTok and my Instagram and disagree with having him down this low. I have him this low because of the injuries. I have him this low because he was hurt for almost half of 21-22. It would be unfair if I put him ahead of some of the players. Yes, he had a great year, 67 points, had a great playoff run. But look, he's not. he will be much higher next year when, when the next season gets factored in. But honestly, I can't put him any higher than 35 when he missed almost all of last year. So I, I got to be honest. Uh, Brad Marchand was at 34 uh, for the Boston Bruins, had an elite year in 21-22, uh, still a great player overall. Many argue that he should be higher. I wouldn't really disagree with you with that. That's a very valid uh, response. But overall, Marchand at 34. I had Rasmus Dahlin at 33. Uh, Dahlin, I think, is a very great um, solid defenseman took a big step in the breakout this year with the Buffalo Sabres, and I can't wait to talk about them in a future video. Maybe we'll talk about them tomorrow. Who knows? But um, Darlene overall, a really solid solid defenseman and has a bright future ahead of him. Uh, Kyle Connor, the Winnipeg Jets, a bona fide goal scorer. Scored less goals than usual this past year, but still a great, a great forward for the Winnipeg Jets. Definitely deserves to be on this list. Number 31, I have Johnny Gaudreau of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, this player scored 115 points this pat um, in 21-22, and then scored 75 uh, in this past year with Columbus. Still a solid player, uh, and will have another good year to come. And he's still a great player, and definitely deserves being the top 50 with the season with the season that he had uh, last year. Uh, Victor Hedman is at the 30 mark. Uh, Hedman mainly because of the past two years. Yesterday, oh, what almost fell? Yesterday or not yesterday? Last season. He had a pretty down um, year, honestly. If we're being for real, he did have a down season. Um, but this year, he had a better year, so that's why he's at the 30 mark. Uh, but Hedman, still nonetheless, one of the better defenders that I've seen. And his time is utilized correctly. He's not playing over 25 minutes a night like guys like Shabbat and Carlson and those guys are. He's getting played the right amount of minutes. Uh, Tim Stutzel at 29. I like Stutzel at 29 a lot because I think, I think when I make this next year, he will be substantially higher. I think he has a 100-point season next year, being honest. I, I really think he has a 100-point season next year, and next year will be his breakout season, or not even his breakout season, his like, next step in his career year because he's now signed to that eight-year deal, which is a steal, by the way, and I, I just like it a lot. Uh, 28, I have Quinn Hughes of Vancouver. Uh, Quinn Hughes, nonetheless, even though Vancouver has been a horrible team for the past couple of years, time and time and again, um, you know, Quinn Hughes has still been that top player, um, top point scoring offensive defenseman for Vancouver uh, was a great pick when they drafted him. Uh, Tage Thompson at 27. And look, this is one of my mistakes that I made. Honestly, I would, I do think he should be higher. 
I kind of do think that now that I, now that I'm looking back at this list. I think maybe he should be around the 20 mark, but it's a little bit unfair to the other players who have played longer. But yeah, Thompson, regardless, a great forward, had just an amazing year. If I'm if I'm listing this as like players that I enjoy the most to watch, he'd be in the top 10. But this is the best players by skill and all that. So Thompson, 27, great player. Uh, Steven Stamkos at 26 uh, to reach the halfway mark of this list. Uh, Stamkos, still a solid player, reached a lot of milestones this past year with Tampa um, and can still put up solid numbers. He's getting up there in age. He's like 35. He's on a contract year next year. So, of course, that will be interesting to see when he gets signed to. But Stamkos, regardless, a amazing franchise player, one of the best in Lightning history. Uh, 25, I have Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators, one of the better offensive defensemen I've ever seen. Uh, put up a 97-point mark last year. Uh, overall, just a great defender. Keeps winning the Norris, or won the Norris in 1920, but of course they're not factored in. He almost won it last year. I keep, I keep thinking like he won it last year, but he didn't win it last year. Should have, but anyways. Yossi, a great player, deserves to be in the 25 mark. Clayton Keller, uh, I have a 24, and this was shockingly, was shocking for some people. Because um, I think Keller... Um, on Arizona, he's a he's an incredibly valuable player. Um, is very valuable to that Arizona Coyotes team, and is a guy who, when you look at him, like look, he's not known very well, but still a guy who put up 85 points with the Coyotes this past year, a team that was awful at points, and that goes to show that Keller has a bright future ahead of him for sure. And I'm really excited to see um, the Coyotes get much more competitive uh, this coming season. Uh, William Nylander is at 23 for Toronto. Uh, and Nylander is one of those other mistakes, too. I low-key kind of want to put him below Thompson and Keller and some of those other guys. Uh, but Nylander is still a solid player. Could get paid $10 million, We'll see. But uh, I think Nylander is still a really solid uh, forward there for Toronto. Definitely deserves to be where he is. Uh, 22, I meet Zibanejad. Uh, Zibanejad, I love a lot. Um, he's very solid, underrated, def- underrated center for the Rangers. Can score good goals. Has some solid defensive capabilities to his game. Uh, a great a great two way player, but more more known as a as a sniper. But yeah, a great goal scorer there for the for the Rangers. Number twenty one, I have Rupe Hint of the Dallas Stars. Criminally underrated, had a great season this past year with Dallas uh, on their run to the conference finals as well. Just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, a great scorer as well. Just Hints deserves to be just barely not making my top twenty. Uh, then you got Sebastian Aho at twenty. Um, Aho. I think he's a very solid center. He doesn't get a lot of got get a lot of recognition for what he deserves. Uh, he's a great two way player, great offensively and defensively, and can make amazing plays. Saw him score a hat trick against my Flyers, which was funny. Uh, then he then you have Miro Heiskanen at nineteenth uh, there for the Dallas Stars. Heiskanen I think is a very great defenseman. Um, doesn't get a lot of recognition, but Heiskanen uh, should get more than he deserves, one hundred percent. Number eighteen, I have Charlie McAvoy of the Boston Bruins. Uh, McAvoy actually is one of the better defenders defensively in the league, so maybe he should be a little bit higher, but still great offensively, great defensively. Uh, he's just good in that remark, but doesn't score a lot of points, but is still very solid on the defensive end. Uh, then you have Jack Hughes of the Devils, and a lot of people were saying I should have Hughes higher. If Hughes has another year like he did this year, he will be higher next year. But Hughes, honestly, I saw players who were better than him, and that's my opinion. Uh, but Hughes overall has had two great years. Last year, though, he did get hurt midway through the year, so I got to factor that into this list. Um, but Hughes still going to be a top 15 player uh, when I do this next year. Number 16, Sidney Crosby of the Pittsburgh Penguins. It'd be criminal if I put him outside of the top outside of the top 20 or anything like that. Uh, Crosby, amazing, still putting up 93 points at like what 34, 35 years old, still an unreal player, and does not get enough recognition. At this point in his career. I'm saying that, honestly. Uh, 15 is Braden Point. He's incredibly valuable to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Scores the most clutch goals. Scored in Game 6 against the, the Leafs last year. Um, can score a lot of goals. And is just an amazing player. And whenever he's not in the lineup, and that showed in the 2022 Finals. Whenever he's not in the lineup, the Lightning lose. It's just it's just a trend. Uh, at 14, I have um, Elias Pettersson of the Vancouver Canucks. And he is someone who is criminally underrated. A guy who was not looked at too much because he's on Vancouver. He put up 102 points this past year, a career high, when Vancouver was absolutely terrible at points. Uh, but yeah, the Canucks, honestly, I'm still wondering where their direction is going to go. But Pedersen at 14, a great player. 13, I have Jason Robertson. I enjoy Jason Robertson a lot. I love Robertson. 
amazing player, just like a, so awesome to watch. And he's he's definitely one of my favorite. Funny thing is, there's like a ref that plays in my one league that like looks like Robertson. And I was like, are you Jason Robertson? One time, it wasn't funny at all. But a- anyways, uh, Robertson at 13, I think is a very solid spot for him. At 12, I have Kirill Kaprizov of the Minnesota Wild, an incredibly valuable player. Let me just say. Um, just not get enough recognition at all. Uh, he was hurt for some of this year, but still very valuable to the Minnesota Wild. That last year in 21-22, he carried them to the playoffs. He is just that valuable to that Wild team. Um, and number 11, people are not going to like this because he had 60 goals this past year, but I have David Pasternak at 11. Uh, people were already really complaining about this in my uh, TikTok and Instagram, but Pasternak, honestly... I can't see him being ranked out of there, being ranked in the top ten above those other guys. It's a great league that we live, that we play in, but I don't see Pasta scoring sixty again. I I can't. I'm sorry. Um, but Pasta nonetheless had a great year, but I don't think he reaches that again. And his goals aren't the best either. He always is scoring the crabby goals, except for some of the nice between the legs ones he had in the playoffs. But honestly, I have Pasternak at eleven. People may disagree with that. I'm sorry, but it's just my opinion. Moving into the top 10, I have Miko Rotten of the Colorado Avalanche, another underrated forward that does not get enough recognition. There were points in this past year where he carried the Colorado Avalanche at points, uh, scored 50 this past year, finally got some recognition, uh, but he never got any. Never, because he was overshadowed by McKinnon, McCarr, and even Landis Cog at points. Uh, number 9 is Austin Matthews. Yeah, and I'm kind of regretting doing this. I was thinking, like, should I put Marner or Matthews at 7? Or at nine, and that was what I was thinking. So I put Matthews there because Matthews had another down year, had a down year comparatively speaking to the sixty goal mark. I kind of don't think he scores sixty again. I think he can be a fifty to fifty five goal scorer, but I don't know about sixty. I don't know if he can get to that sixty mark again, but we'll find out, of course. But Matthews, I have a nine. He will be higher next year. Don't worry, Leafs fans. Uh, number eight, I have Nikita Kucherov would be Tampa Bay Lightning. This guy is just amazing. Like, in, not even just like basing off of two seasons. In all of my career, in all my like time watching hockey, I have never seen a player that's as elite as Kucherov. Besides maybe like McDavid and McKinnon, and that's basically it. Like Kucherov, he's criminally underrated at points because he was hurt for like those two years. Uh, but still, is a great scorer. He can put up insane points. He put up 110 last year, and nobody talked about that. Hardly anybody talked about that point mark. So yeah, Kucherov, criminally amazing player. Uh, definitely deserves to be here. Uh, I have Mitch Marner at 7. Marner, a great scorer, had a great year. Um, whenever his contract year comes up, there's going to be those questions of what, how much he's going to get paid. But Marner, still a great player, a great forward there uh, for Toronto. And then we get into the controversy, if there hasn't been any already. At number 6, I have Kale McCarr. Uh, McCarr, look, he's a great offensive defenseman. He's a great elite defenseman, great with the puck, great mover. Um, solid defensively, but he's not good enough defensively. Uh, Devon Taze covers a lot of what his, what his defensive wokes are. Um, Makar, really, the only reason why he's able to be so good and so high on this list is because of Devon Taze at 44. So that is why I have Makar at 6. And I know people are going to hate that, but I'll get into my reasoning in a little bit here. Uh, number 5 is Matthew Kachuk. And Kachuk, I didn't think so highly of Kachuk. I think I had Kachuk around like the 40s. If I did this last year, or like the third, or like the thirties or the twenties, maybe. But Kachuk, honestly, he took such a high step this year because he carried Florida, and I don't mean like he didn't like he did nothing. He carried them, like he he literally put them on his back and took them to the. Honestly, I even thought he deserved the heart at, at points in this season. He took him in the regular season and the playoffs and carried them the whole way. Him and Bobrovsky just absolutely just steamrolled them all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, hundred percent. And then he got hurt, and they just ran out of juice. That's what happened. Uh, but Kachuk at five. At four, I have Adam Fox. Yeah. I have Adam Fox at four, ranking out as the top defender in my top 50 players. Uh, but, yeah, Fox at four. He's better defensively than McCarr, but he puts up great offensive numbers as well. A great two-way player. And as well as that, too, he's not on as an elite defense as the Avalanche are. Like, when you look at Colorado, you got you got McCarr and Taze. And then you look at New York, you got Fox and Miller. Fox and Keandre Miller. No, 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 no shade being thrown at Miller. He's a great defenseman, but he's nowhere compared to what Taze is with McCarr. Fox does everything on his own, and he's just that good of a player like that. So, and and it shows. Number three, I have Leon Dreisaitl. Uh Dreisaitl, even though he plays with McDavid, still an elite German center. Um, he scored some goals that I didn't even think were possible. 
Um, and he even like put up insane playoff stats this past year and was just an elite player and amazing. Just one of my favorite players overall. Number two is Nathan McKinnon. I'm um, so glad he got a Stanley Cup. I was just very happy to see that he finally got one because he definitely earned it. He grinded his way to it, and it, it's something that was definitely well earned by him. And he's an amazing forward. It's been been a been a great one for years. Finally reached the 100 point mark, and he's a, he's got he's got his best years coming. And then at number one, I have Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. And there's no question. There's no really need to explain it. An elite player. Um, there's not much I need to go into, but. Yeah, that's my top 50 players. Uh, I know you guys are going to disagree with me, so argue with me in the comment section down below. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe button down below. Uh, again, there is no goalies on this list. Our top 20 goalies will come out in a few days, either Tuesday, either Wednesday or Thursday. I haven't decided what day just yet, but we'll figure it out. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next one. Adios.